Hashem is never be blessed forever and ever. I want to start with saying to the Rabbam, to the Goldstein's family for hosting the Shi'ur. May Hashem bless you, Ezrat Hashem with good health, Nachat from all your children, and great Parnassah, easy Parnassah, Ezrat Hashem. Say Amen. Amen. So, Hanukkah is right around the corner, and we decided that uh, we'll talk, Ezrat Hashem, a little bit about Hanukkah. I have a lot of questions about uh, Hanukkah. So, <clears throat> when you prepare a class for Hanukkah, there's a lot of topic you can uh, learn, study, put, not, uh, put it in notes and share. But mostly, I notice, is a little bit history and halacha. It's not so easy to find something that uh, will hold, if it's not halacha, um, for all hour, all hour. And then I ask myself a question, because I notice there is a one word that repeats itself uh, in regards to uh, this great miracle that happens in Hanukkah. We'll see in a moment what is this word, and how is that related to the Hashmonaim, and how they were able to defeat such a great mighty army, like the Greeks, that was an empire of those days, there's no, there's no game. What gave them the, the power, the strength? How is it possible that just few were able to defeat the many? And we sang in the tefillot every day, uh, when we sang al Nisim on Hanukkah, that the great Greeks, Giborim Biyad Hashim was delivered to the hand of the weak, to the, those who were weak, to, to, to the few. How is that possible? So I think I think I found the answer that I'm happy with, because I see it all over, and it's not only about those days, 167 BCE, it related to us today, 2022. We can use the same methods and power in order to achieve victories in our own personal life. Make sense? What is it? What is this secret? Turns out that it's a very ancient secret that our sages teaching us and preaching about it almost on a daily basis and it's even the first halacha in the Shulchan Aruch. But before that, let me give you a little bit about what happened uh, in, in, in those days. So, the Greeks are in control in the land of Israel. They are uh, not letting the Jewish people observe mitzvot, Torah. They say, you're going to be together. It can be the same. You don't have to be different. You can just need to wear the same clothing. And you're not supposed to go to shul because we don't go to shul. You eat what we eat. You'll be together, the same, no different. Respect each other, and then you can live. But we know that when we leave Torah, we don't follow Torah, we're doomed, finished. There is no more Israel, there's no more Jewish, there's no more Judaism, it's done. The story happens around 167 BCE, before Common Era, okay? And people think that it happens just for, it lasts for maybe a few weeks or months, but it actually was for the last, at least 25 years total. Uh, and the story with Hanukkah, when they found the jar of oil, was after three years, from 167 to 164 BCE, after the Hashmonaim was able to defeat the Greeks. Okay? And then there's, uh, I don't want to go there, uh, Shimon left and he made an agreement that it was for 25 years that the Jewish people uh, were, uh, they got back control in the land of Israel uh, in a way. Basically all the holidays, the Jewish holiday that we celebrate to the memory of miracles that Hashem did to us has shayachut leora meaning they has uh, the, the sign of lights, 
is, 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 is well connected to these holidays. It's when we, the, the light overcome darkness, especially in the miracles of Egypt, as it says, ulechol bene Israel haya or bemoshvotam. When the Egyptians suffered from darkness, the Jewish people had light. And the Nespurim, Layhudim Aita, Layhudim, Layhudim, Ha, Haita, Ora, what's Ora? Light again. And, and Hanukkah, with the oil, with the menorah. <coughs> By the way, just a quick question, when they enter the Beit Mikdash, what... Where they uh, lit the Chanuk, the menorah? What menorah they found? How did they light the candles? Do you know? The one on, on the Kohen, was it the, the big one? It was no menorah. Hmm. The yeah. Greeks took it already. Hmm. Oh, they took it already. There's no menorah. They enter a place without the menorah. Oh. So what did they do? We'll see it later. It's a, uh, it's a Gemara, but many people don't know that. They thought they, oh, the menorah is there, waiting for just to be lit, and the jar, they found it. There was no menorah. So what happened? How they, how they were able to lit the kindle the menorah? Or what menorah? And how this menorah that the lid looks like? You'll be surprised. Anyway, in Ta'amea Minagim, Ta'amea the reasoning for the Minhagim, the customs, it was brought by the name of Sam Sofer. Uh, why Hanukkah is not mentioned in the Mishnah? You find it only in the Gemara, Masechet Shabbat. Nothing, no indication for Hanukkah in the Mishnah. Why is that? Because who wrote the Mishnah, the Mishnayot? Rabbi Yudha Anasi. Rabbi Yudha Anasi came from the lineage of by David, all the way. He's from the tribe of Judah. He's all the way to King David. So he is well connected to the seeds of the Melucha, of, of, of kingdomship. And the miracle of Hanukkah was made by the Hashimonaim. That after they took control, they were tzaddikim, they were rabbis, and they were kohanim. And they want to be kings as well, which they were not supposed to. The crown of... Uh, uh, the crown of Malchut Kiddushi belongs to only those who came from the tribe of Yudah. So, Rabbi Yudah Nasi ignored that event. That was the reason he put. He didn't put. He didn't mention that at all in the Mishnah, because that was a grave sin on the side of the Hashmonaim, and they're saying that there is no, no one left on the house of Hashmonai. Everybody died. Why? It was there were great tzaddikim. Because they took something that does not belong to them. Mm. Uh, it could be tzaddik. That's crown of kehuna, crown of Torah, crown of Malchut. Kehuna, you, you're born to it. Right? You're born to Kohen. You can't choose to be Kohen. Torah, you need to acquire. You need to work hard in order to uh, become a scholar. But to be a king, crown of uh, kindership, you, you, you don't take it. It depends if you're from the tribe of Yehuda and so forth. They want to take it all. They have good intention, but they're not supposed to do that. And this is why they were punished severely. And there were no survivors from the house of the Hashmonaim. There's something that our sages teaches us. If you try to take something that does not belong to you, you're going to lose it, and you're going to lose everything you already have. So we need to be careful. Today, before we started jealous at someone else. Uh, <clears throat> so from all the uh, holidays, this is the one, this is the only one, Hanukkah, that is not mentioned, there is no indication for it in the Mishnah or in the Bible, in the Tanakh. Right? Even Purim we have indication for it. In the Megillah is there. It so the Sefer Maccabim, which was never made to... Right, the doesn't matter. It. Because it was sealed with the book of Esther, the Tanakh. We have 24 Sepharim books. The last one was, and the last people think it's Divra Yomim, it was, uh, it was Esther. Anyways, that was the last book that uh, entered to the Tanakh, to the Bible. My Hanukkah, so the Talmud asked, 
בתנו רבונן, בכ"ה בכסלו, when these other worshippers came to the Beit HaMikdash, and impure, all the oil in the Hechal, and so forth and so on, they found only one jar, and there is a great question that everybody asks all, all the time, every year, about Hanukkah. Why we are celebrating eight days? What do you mean why we are celebrating eight days? The menorah was on for eight days. Eight yeah. days. So they said, hold on. They found the jar. The oil in the jar is good enough for how many days? One. One day. So one is not a miracle. It's supposed to live anyways. It's supposed to be seven days. Why we are celebrating eight days? Right? It's a very famous question. Every year I hear there is more answers. There are already two, over 200 something answers to that question. One of the first answers that I, uh, on that list is basically it says that the Kohen put the oil and the, the, the miracle started the first day. How it started? Because it, it goes very, very slowly, instead of going all of it within 24 hours, it goes one-eighth every day, one-eighth. Meaning, on the first day, there was already a miracle. Only one-eighth of it, okay, during these eight days. So every day was a miracle. There's more answer to it, but this is the most uh, uh, famous one. Okay, so... The victory of the Hashmonaim, we are celebrating the victory of the Hashmonaim for the, uh, on these eight days, and it's interesting to see that eight rulers came from the dynasty of the Hashmonaim. Mm -hmm. Yehuda, Yehonatan, Shimon, Yohanan, Aristobol, Alexander Yanai, and <clears throat> the brothers Aristobol and Horkinos. So, uh, <clears throat> We see from here that it's also hinted in that uh, about these rulers from the house of the Hashmonaim. What's the meaning of the word Hashmonaim? What Hashmonaim comes from? What is this word Hashmonaim? So it's related to Matityahu, right, and his children. Uh, in Masechet Midot, mentioned them in chapter Aleph, Mishnah, Bnei Hashmonaim, in the Gemara. Shabbat Chaf Aleph. Shabbat Chaf is the most famous place about Hanukkah. The track to Shabbat. Malchut Bet Hashmonai. Radak says, when, uh, on his uh, commentary over the Tehillim, Hashmonaim means like Hashmanim. Hashmanim is words we can find uh, in, in Megillat Esther. Hashman means, uh, no, in Tehillim, sorry. Hashmanim means ministers, important people. As it says, Yetayu Hashmanim Mine Mitzrayim in Tehillim. Some says Hashmonaim is the acronym, it's the abbreviation of the decrees that the Greeks put upon the Jewish people. Beside that, uh, they uh, fought against Tznius, the Greeks, because they knew that the Jewish people are very much uh, Tznius they made sure that they have no doors, no doors allowed. You can cover windows. Woman cannot cover her hair. Um, they have restroom on the flea market, on the street, open, no doors. It's like, uh, like, a, it's a, like a behemoth, you know, like an animal. So they made a decree, no Chodesh, no Shabbat, no Mila, no Nida, no issues. This is the abbreviation of acronym of Hashmonai. Chet, mm. Hashmonai is Chodesh, means you can uh, calculate the time in order to determine when it's going to be Our the next season. holiday. Mm. No keeping Shabbat, uh, no can do Mila, Bris Mila, no keep uh, family purity, Nida, and it should. Okay, it should be you know, open for everybody, everybody can be with everybody. Okay, go ahead. Isn't it also interesting that the word Shmoni is also in that name? Nahon, very good. That's another one. There's another ex explanation. There's that saying that uh, that the 
grandfather of Matityahu, Av Abba, the father of Yohanan Kohen Gadol, his name was Hashmonai. There's a, some other opinion. Some says that there's a place in Yehuda territory called Hashmon. And this family came from Hashmon. So, there's a few reasons why they call Hashmonai. You notice that there is no a mitzvah to do sauda on Hanukkah. Right? On Purim, there's a mitzvah to do sauda. What this guy's done. On Purim, you, do, you have to do sauda during the day. If you did sauda in the evening, you didn't fulfill the mitzvah. But you have to do sauda during the day. Hanukkah, you don't have to. If you do a mitzvah, if you do sauda, you can have words of Torah and singing, you can turn it to a sauda of mitzvah. Okay, so not mitzvah, but it's not mandatory by the halacha. And what's the reason? Because Hanukkah is all, it's, it's more spiritual than physical. What does that mean? Our, the enemies in Purim time, they fought against the body, the physical body, to destroy all Israel. So we do Seuda, we feed the body. But Greek says, no, no, you can live. We're not going after you. We don't want to kill you. It's a bit like that. They go against, they fought against the spirituality, the Torah. So light represents respirituality. Spirituality. And we're also putting it on the windows to show everybody we still here, we still exist. There is no um, uh, seuda required on Purim. Okay. I will conclude this part of the introduction of Puri of Hanukkah with saying the following: Hanukkah, according to the Talmud, it says Ner Hanukkah mitzvah. The main mitzvah of Hanukkah, you know where to place the Hanukkiah? Outside. If not outside, mamish outside, you know people, some people live in buildings, by the window or by the door. Uvishat sakana, times of danger, put it on the table inside the house. You still have to fulfill the mitzvah, but you don't have to advertise uh, to the public. Inside the house, in times of Sakana. So Olelot Ephraim says something very interesting. He says one of the foundations of, Judi Ju of uh, Judaism is that we uh, should uh, care for each other. Be united. Not to take care of yourself, about yourself only. When we're dealing with the mitzvah of Hanukkah, it teaches us to, that there are many Jews out there but we need to bring back to Hashem, to Torah, to do an outreach. There are the people that are mibachut, outside. But sometimes the time of danger, sometimes, you know, you can't, for many reasons. So make sure to do it with your own inside family. Mm -hmm. Wife, husband, children, uncles, inside, the, within the family. You know, the halakha is very strict about lighting candles on Hanukkah. Someone says, listen, I don't have money. I can't buy oil. I can't buy candle. I don't have a dollar in my pocket. Am I exempt? No. Is this guy exempt? No. Halakha says, go to the pawn shop, give them your jacket, get money, and buy oil for it. Mm. You have to become schnorrer. <laughs> you got to do it. This mitzvah is very, very important. There's two mitzvot that you must go, it's called mechazer al to shnor from place to place to get money, in order to fulfill this mitzvot. One of them is Hanukkah, and the second one is the mitzvah of Arba Kosot, the four cups of an Passover. Not about okay. the minim. Hmm? No, not about the about the mini uh, for sports fishes, you can borrow it from your friend. He can give you as a gift, and you can say, But Hanukkah, you have to acquire the oil, and, and, and Passover, you have to acquire, you have to buy the, the, the wine. So, why are these two mitzvot so important and they are so different from any other mitzvot? So, Rabbi Avraham Elim Shochov says, It says the following. If someone has plans, he planned to perform, to do a mitzvah, but he couldn't. He got a flat tire, 
he lost the money, he wants to give to tzedakah, you name it. From Shammai, they see it's not his fault. He gets the full reward, as if he did it, as if he showed up to Shachris. He will get the full reward. Nevertheless, he never showed up. He had a good intention. He could He was prevented because of, I don't know, honest. How do you say honest? Accident. Accident. So, it says, In meaning, in all the other mitzvot, if one had an accident, it was Anus planning to be there, just thought, thinking about it, and your intention accounts. Okay? But about Hanukkah and four cups, the main mitzvah is to advertise the mitzvah, to advertise the miracle. How you can advertise the miracle with intentions only? <laughs> intention is not enough. This is why these special mitzvot have to make extra efforts to publicize it. Right. Um, it says, I want to think it, the Seder Brachot in Hanukkah, what's the order of the Brachot? I don't know if you noticed that. Lehadlik Ner, Hanukkah, Israelim says Hanukkah, Shkazim says Shel Hanukkah. Lehadlik Ner, Shel Hanukkah, that's one. What's the next one is? Shasa Nisim Lavotin, Bayomi Vahem Bazman Azeh. And then, Shechyanu Vikim Amigianu Lazman Azeh. How you reply? Ah, we said no, it's wrong. You can't say ah, amen. You have to reply <laughs> amen. <laughs> because if you say ah, amen, you didn't fulfill the mitzvah. What were you saying, because you say ah, amen, there's no two aleph there. Yeah. Or some says aleph with the long hey. Ah, amen. No. <laughs> amen. <laughs> so the first one is to light candle of Hanukkah. Secondly, is the Ni'ad Anasanisim and the Sheikh Yanu. The Rabbi Yitzhak Nivolozhin says something very interesting. He says, you know what? It's like the mitzvah of the Torah when Moshe Rabbeinu was instructed or commanded to build Nachash Nechoshet. What's Nachash Nechoshet, you know? The Saraf, when it was a plague. What is it? The Copper Serpent. The copper serpent. How is that related to the serpent? He says, first Hashem told them, Aselecha Saraf. Saraf is another word for serpent. Saraf means to serve, to burn. Lehad likner. And it says next, Vesimoto al nes, and put it on nes. Nes means like a flag, something, a stick that is a high. Nes, nisim, al nisim. And the, and the next one, it says, Hashem, V'ra'auto v'chai, v'chai v'sheikh yanu. So it says, it's related to that special mitzvah, that Moshe Rabbeinu saved people's life. They looked at this copper serpent, and they survived, they didn't die. It makes, this special mitzvah of Hanukkah, makes direct connection to Hashem. That's the power of this mitzvah. Okay, so, yes. Um, why do we say amen to our own blessing? I thought we only say that to someone. Very good question. Blessing. And the answer is, you don't. What does that mean? You say the bracha, and someone else says amen. But if you're home alone, and you're saying bracha for the uh, kindling the Hanukkah light, you just say the bracha, you don't say amen on your own bracha, ever. Not ever during the tefillah we do that. Okay, in certain places. I have something yes. about which I believe the serpent and the staff is the symbol of the medical profession and throughout the world. Yes, is this that is. The same thing? Yes, it's I heard it when I did the. Uh, huh? In Latin, it's called caduceus, I believe. I, I used, I got the same one when I was in the IDF. I did the uh, paramedic course after three months. They give you this special with the symbol. You know the guy with the, has needle. They put it through. <coughs> they push it on you, <laughs> and then you have to take it out. Of course, put it in there. But uh, that's tradition. It's tradition. <laughs> so you know, we learn a little bit about Hanukkah, what it means, a little bit in depth. And I was looking for, as I told you in the beginning of this class, I was looking for the secret of the Hashmonaim victory. What was it? Do you have any idea, by the way? He told us. 
I told you already? Gevura. Gevura. What's Gevura? Strength. Strength. Strength literally means koach. Okay. Give me something a little bit more. I'm going, to, I'm going to use the word Gevura versus the English word. But Gevura means what? Overcoming. Overcoming. Okay. No, it's true. What, what, what it says? The name of it? Medical Corps. The U.S. Army Medical Corps okay. uses that also. So Gevura in Judaism is a key oh. to succeed in many, many things, in many, many aspects. And it's a key to succeed in life, in many things we do. Good morning. We'll get to it. But I had a lot of questions about that. This is wrong. <laughs> Caduceus is the traditional symbol of Hermes, that's Greek god, and features two snakes winding around an often winged staff. It is often okay. Symbol. Let's discuss it later. Okay. But well, you're right. That was the symbol. Gevura means mighty. Gevura can be bravery or mighty deeds, mighty actions. Make sense? Gevura. Gevura means in Hebrew uh, strength. Could be uh, bravery. Could be mighty deeds, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So, if I tell people, I ask people, tell me what's Gevura is all about. How people will describe mighty deeds. Who is Gibor? Who is, is uh, considered a brave man? You know, Hashemarim were very brave, right? Well, let me ask you today. Who is brave in your eyes? Give me an example. Stands for what's right. Stands for what's right. <laughs> okay, what else? Regardless of how many people are against him. Okay, what else? I'm going to question that in a minute. Okay. There are, there are different scenarios for it. Exactly. Sometimes a very negative actions can be called or translated into givura, uh, mighty deeds. Some people can do a crazy, crazy thing. They succeeded, and now they're called heroes. No. Brave people. But if you think, but, for example, like King Has, okay. what he did at the time, that I would consider that Givurah. You won't consider it as Givurah? You would, you would. You say you won't? I would. You would, okay. Yes. He was a zealous man, right? Yes. Yeah. Out of jealousy. He was a Kanai. So, you know, a lot of guts. right? I agree. Um, He's a Texan. People can act, you know, can, can be reckless. People can be wants attention. Um, I don't know, bullies mm -hmm. use violence. Mm -hmm. In other people's eyes, they see that they succeed. They're strong. They have mighty power. They they have mighty deeds. Are they considered gibor, giborim? No. Is that considered gevura? No, no. It's for the wrong reasons. Well, Yitzhak. so let me challenge you. Yitzhak is a gevura. Yitzhak? Yitzhak? It's come from the sort of gevura. It's deen, judgment, correct. Strength. According to the Kabbalah. So, Yitzhak is gevura. I agree. What other people, I'm going to take it to the extreme. People that succeed to defeat other nations, other people. And they're very strong. The, 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 the people uh, admire them. They consider Giborim. Mm -hmm. Is that Givura as well? Uh, mm -hmm. Hitler? Machshmo de Zichro. Is a Gibor? It's very good. It's said in English. It depends on the eyes of the beholder. It depends who, who says it, from which angle. So what counts as Givura? Le Manshaman. Was it? Was it? She said for the sake of heaven. But I want to. I want to see. I want to try to find the the word gevura, as we're saying, mighty deeds. What's 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 the secret of this word? So I can relate to it. I can do the same, and I will succeed with do with with, with actions that I'm doing or about to do. So what is gevura? Gevura can be very negative. It can be very positive. It can be from Torah and not from Torah. But yet, people that 
do whatever they do, they consider giborim, heroes, brave, and it's not from Torah. Many times it's against Torah. Give an example from the Torah. It says in the book of Bereshit, the people that are, the Torah itself called them giborim, they mighty deeds. It says in Bereshit, Hema ha-giborim asher me'olam anshe Hashem. They have great names. The, door, the, the, the generation prior to the flood. They were great. Great in what? They were great sinners. But they called Giborim. Mm. What's going on here? And She Hashem. It, you, you heard the guy named Nimrod? Yeah. yeah. Mighty Hunter. What is it? Mighty Hunter. Mighty? Nimrod. You know who's Nimrod? Yeah. Who is Nimrod? What time he lived? Times of Avram Avinu, right? He challenged Avram Avinu. Eventually someone killed him. Who killed him? Someone from our own family. Esau. Esau killed him. So the Torah defined Nimrod as a gibor. Such a great wicked. Worship idols. Huh? Executing all his... Uh, People who are not afraid. And I'm quoting, Hu hechel liyod gibor ba'aretz, Hu haya gibor tzayi, twice, two times, so it says that he was gibor, gevura, mighty, mighty deeds, brave. He got a title of gibor. Good or bad? Here Rashi says, Rashi noticed that, and he says, gibor lehara. Gibor Lehara. What does that mean? He was brave and mighty did to do evil. You can sometimes take powers that Hashem gives you and do evil to you, to the people around you, against Hashem, against Allah. In the book of Shmuel, Shmuel Bet, Samuel, we find many other heroes, Giborim, the Giborim of David, that they save people, they save the people of Israel from the end of Plishtim. In the Tefillah Lanisim, that we're going to read Be'ezrat Hashem, during Tefillah, it says, Masarta Giborim Biyad Chalashim, Hashem, Toda Raba, that you delivered Giborim in the hands of Chalashim. You delivered the brave, the great, those who have a great power to the hands of Chalashim. Those who have weak power. Right? Did I say right? Chalashim. Yeah. Chalash is weak. Right? So this Giborim that we say, when I say a few times a day, at least three times a day during Hanukkah, during Tefillah, to whom is it related to? Giborim. Who is the Giborim here? Who is the Giborim? In addition to the Chashmonim? We saying it in the Tefillah that Hashem delivered Giborim to the hand of the weak. The, the, the who is the Giborim? The, the Jews who stood up and did not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Greeks. No, the Greeks. The Greeks. No, but the Greeks. The Greeks are the Giborim here, right. and the Chalashim supposedly are the Jews. Right. Well, who, who is who is being called Giborim? The, the Greeks. In the the Greeks. Thank you. That's what I want to know. They call them Giborim. To give them such a title. It's a great title to be Gibor. Did you, did you ever think about that? So, we find in the Nesarshim different commentaries to the notion called, to the Musa called Gevura. It says about the Mabul, the Shoresh. You know what's the Shoresh of the word Gevura? Yeah. 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 I give you a trick. Anytime you want to find the Shoresh, ask one question. Say what he did yesterday. Achalnu. Achalnu. What's Achalnu we ate, right? He, yesterday, Achal. Who et mol? Always do who et mol. You find most of the time the Shoresh. Yashavnu. Who et mol? Yashav. That's the Shoresh. You understand what I'm saying? Always ask, who? Who you mean in Hebrew? Hey, Who? Etmol. Him, yesterday. So you know, 
How to find the Shomesh? So, it says about the Mabul, Vehamayim gavru me'od me'od, the water mightily increases you know, over the, until the, it covered the mountain. So, Gevura is related also to the water. What's Gevura is all about? Maybe it means power? Ramban brings two explanations, two commentaries about the word Givura, Gavru. It's related to water. Because when we say Gibor, we, it's always related to a human being. Someone has mighty power. Someone that is brave. How bravery is connected to water. So Ramban says Gavru could be two uh, explanations. One, Gavar, Ligbor, means a lot, plenty. Ribui, Ramban says, Ribui Gadol means plenty. Depend on the context, okay? And second, he says, uh, with a great force, meaning, Koah Gadol, okay? And he brings other, uh, more, explan more uh, examples from Job, Ufishem Kid Gabaru, people that are doing a lot of... Uh, Crimes, a lot of scenes, and the scenes are increases and get greater and greater. Uh, someone that, uh, what were we saying about someone that reached the age 80? Gvura. 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 No, thank you. It says, Im shana. Average is 70 years. If you reach 80, it's in Givura. <laughs> I see someone. <laughs> you better. What a mighty power you have here. But believe it or not, something I will discuss in a minute, Bezat Hashem, I played, maybe it was eight, nine years ago, racquetball with the old guy. And he was playing pretty good. We were playing racquetball, we were playing partners. So he made me do the running, but he was in the middle, he was reaching whatever we could but he was running, you know, relatively. I'm thinking this guy is 60-something years old, but he looks good. And then it turns out I was almost 87 years old. Wow. Mm. I didn't believe it. Wow. He went to his car and he showed me his driver's license. <laughs> it was before Hitler, I think. Uh, <laughs> 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 so I thought, what's your secret? What's your secret? He says, every day... Racquetball. Racquetball. <laughs> he's doing the racquetball. He's doing a lot of exercise on a daily basis. He works. He didn't give up. He has a business selling, whatever. I don't remember. Um, and it's uh, something for gardening outside, uh, you know, um, furniture. And you have uh, children. I didn't give them the business. He works there as the boss. As, as long as he told me, as long as I can stand, I'm coming every morning early to the business. Sometimes he has to carry stuff. You know, he lived the life. He has a purpose. Right. By the way, there is a, a very, just a digression, there's a, a very quick video of this ballerina. Ballerina? This is a ballerina, she's a hundred years old. Oh. Wow, ah, years someone sent it to me a long time ago. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 100 years old. She's from Russia or something? Or probably, uh. that Anyways, that. we're saying in the tefillah, אתה גיבור לעולם, אשר מחיה מתים, אתה רב להושיע, משיב הרוח ומוריד הגשם. We say in the every day that Hashem is גיבור. So what's גיבור? And what kind of גבורה the חשמונאים had? So, so far we saw גבורה can do great things, <coughs> either in quantity or with force. So we know, we learn, we understand, there is a good גבורה, and there is a bad gvura. Make sense? Yeah. Anybody want to ask anything before we continue? Okay. In Midrash, Shemot Rabba says the following. Yesh gvura shehi tova lebealeha. There is a gvura that is good to its uh, owners. owners. Okay, I want to try it literally. And one that is bad to its owner. Tova lebealeha. One, for example, that it's good to its owner, it's David. And it says, Hika Shaul Be'anafav, the David Birvevotav. Umisham Ahavu, Kol Israel, Shenema, Kol Israel, Yuda, Hebe David. And one that is bad to his. Okay, so let me translate that. 
Who is a good example of a good givura? King David. Because he was able to defeat his enemies. Right? And then it says, who is bad? And then it says, one that is bad to its owner, the, 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 the might of Goliath. Goliath. I don't understand. Take David. He fought against enemy. Defeat them. He's a hero. He's brave. Mighty power. Take Goliath. Do the same thing. But no. Fuya. It's not good. Not good. Why not good? Both of them were able to kill their enemies. Why one his givura considered great and one is considered very bad. Till that it says that he died like a dog. Eventually he died, you know, and how, how he died? David killed him. How he killed him? With the slingshot. No, no, a slingshot. No? The slingshot, he just made him... He took off his head. With, with he took off his head. Oh. Right. The, the stone... Oh, just knocked him out. Just knocked him out, that's it. <laughs> he has a big head, you know. <laughs> and on the field, he was able, in a way, to take his Goliath sword. He didn't come with the, with the, sword. With the sword. And he chopped his head off. Oh, that's what killed him. What's the difference between the two? They were both fighting, and I'm sure that Goliath fought m much more than David. That's what he did all day long. He didn't write to heal him, he didn't have to be ahead of a baby, he didn't do all that. He was busy killing. One is good, one is bad. What's the difference between these two? They're both considered giborim. One is bad, one is good. Why? What's the difference between the two? Can you tell me? About Israel, it says, and all Israel and Yehuda love David. The Plishtim didn't even take the body. Vayigo Plishtim, came at the Plishtim, saw that their hero, Giboran, hero, died, they reigned for their life. Vayanusu, they reigned for their life. They even left his body and field. Maybe they took it later. What's the difference between the two? Can you tell me? They both killed their enemies. Okay. So King David Ariel says did it for Shem Shema for the sake of heaven. And uh, what what Goliath did it for? Money. Could be money. Power, honor. Power, power honor. Kavod, honor. To get a better position in the army. Thinking he's gonna defeat Hashem right? at the end of the day. Maybe to show off. Maybe to get, I don't know, more wife. I don't know. It's not so what's Givurah? They are both heroes. Okay. We saw in Midrash Tehilim, it says, as a story about Shaul that he is commanding and ordering to kill Kohanim in Nov. Why kill the Kohanim? 85 Kohanim. He called Doeg and Doeg killed them. You heard the name, you remember the, you know the guy named Doeg? He was the genius of that generation. Great scholar. And he killed him. And it says, Re'eh, the Midrash says, Eze gvura yellow. He was such a, a mighty power. He's gibor. Who gibor? Do'eh. He killed Jews. He killed Kohanim. Why are you giving the title gibor? What did he do? Shelo si'o ba'olam adam elahu atzmam agam. He didn't need any help from anybody. He was able to kill all of them. You know how he killed them? He put them in line, he took a sword, sharpened it, and go one by one. Shechita. Yes. Shechita to each and one of them. One of them were, I don't want to say kids, but young men. You need to be very, you have to have a very strong heart to do something. It's cruel! But yet it's considered gvura. So maybe gvura means that you're tough, that you can kill. You don't get too excited from blood. <laughs> Maybe that's considered a gevura. Shelo siyo adam ba'olam. And then it says in the Midrash, V'david metzavach matit alel bera gibor. David says, why are you bragging all day long with, with, with doing some such horrible actions considered as a gibor? What do you want from me? I did the mitzvah. They rebel against the king. So I was supposed to kill them. He justifies his actions in order to be able to give himself strength to kill innocent Jews. 
Why he killed them? Because they like they helped David, and David at the time was uh, King Saul's enemy. So he justified oh, the rebel against the king. <clears throat> was the judgment against such case? Death. <clears throat> you know, I think it was the first time that anybody refused to a king's commands because Saul asked his army, Avner and other people, to do it, and they refused. They want to touch the rabbis. It's the Godol Ador. Are you expecting to kill him? And Shaul says, well, it's on you. You brought the situation from you, did it? Uh, King Doeg says, I'm glad to do a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah! He killed innocent Jews with the power of, what he thought, a mitzvah. Is he considered gibor? No. They call him gibor? Amar David le Doeg. Adam Gibor Verosh Le Sanhedrin Itiasek Berazot. You know, at the time, Doeg was the head of the Sanhedrin. He says, This is what you're dealing with? Killing people? Calling it a mitzvah? You're saying Leshonara! Vezo Gvura hi Shere Adam et Havero, Kir Dorfo Labor. Where was your girl with Dorfo Zogvura? He says, If someone sees his friends by a very deep and from a cliff, you push him, it's, it's, it's called mighty power. If, if you, if so a guy sees friends, the edge of a roof, you push him down, it's called a, a, a mighty power. That's called givura. You saw so far that givura can be positive, can be negative, but it's still called givura. Do you notice that? It's still called givura. You want to ask? Yeah, they asked if what Doeg do, did. Isn't that Hilul Hashem? That's a good question, I don't know. Could be Hilul Hashem. Obviously, what about Shimshon? What about Shimshon? Would he be considered uh, Gevura? What his strength? Uh, Shimshon is on my list. Oh, okay. And he was a great Gevura. And this big when big you big see Shimshon, you describe Shimshon. If I ask you to draw Shimshon, how will you withdraw him? Muscle. Schwarzenegger, at least Schwarzenegger, right? And, and the fact that he was a Nazir, does that give you Gavura? Yeah. So he was not like that. He was skinny and short. Oh, and he was limping. Nevish. Limping in both legs. Really? Yeah. You Maccabee? No. Ma Shimshon. 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 No, I'm talking about uh, the Maccabee were also very... They're nerdy. Apparently... They, they are Torah together. scholars. Right. They're, They're not trained. No. In the very beginning, they had no weapons. They, were, they, were very they used the shechita, shechita knives no. to go during the night, raid in Greek camps, come at night, cut the tent, come, go in, take out the, the, the blanket, do shechita without the bracha, <laughs> killing many of them every night. It gets the army, the Greek army confused. What's going on here? Who's coming here at night? Hashem helped the Hashemunayim every step on the way. Then, in some camps, it said they left a lot of weapons, so the Hashemunayim were able to gather weapons from what the Greek left. And little by little, they got more people to join them and more weapons that the Greeks uh, left behind. <clears throat> so, how... Can we tell what is considered a good givura? So, I give you now the answer. And this is what, this is the answer and the key in order to succeed in every mission we do. And let me tell you, it doesn't look like I'm going to finish it today, but at least we know the answer. Hashem said, I will tell you what's considered a good givura in my eyes. And he called Yermiao and told him, I'm going to tell you the secret. You need to spread the word. And Yermiao says the following. It's from Hashem. What's a good givura? It says in Yermiao 9, verse 22-23, Ko amar Hashem, I'm going to translate it here, so I'm going to translate it freely, okay? Ko amar Hashem, Hashem so, uh, so said Hashem. Al ithalel chacham v'chokhmato, a wise man should not break with his wisdom. And you need guys to help me with this, okay? 
ואל יתהלל הגיבור בגבורתו. And the, the brave or the mighty, the one that have mighty power, should not uh, praise himself with his mighty powers. ואל יתהלל עשיר בראשו, and not the one that is rich with, with his wealth, should not pray about his wealth, or, or confidence in his wealth, or confidence in his strength. כי אם בזאת יתהלל המתהלל. Oh, you want to brag about something? You want to lean on something that Hashem says, Hashem put his step on it, Hashem will authorize. There's one thing, and that will be considered as a gibor, a real gibor. A gibor in the eyes of Hashem. What is it? אם בזאת יתהלל המתהלל, השכל וידוע אותי. כי אני אדוני. עושה חסד, משפט וצדקה בארץ. Meaning, a real hero in the eyes of Hashem, a hero, someone that has mighty power, is the one that knows God and follows his Torah and mitzvot. That's it. Whatever you do, you do for the sake of Shomai. This is, this is how one is considered as Gibor. This is called Gvura. I'll ask about, about the question in a minute. Meaning, you eat, not your own stomach, your own benefit, because you're going to be saying, I'm going to have strength, so I can learn Torah. Um, I'm going to go to sleep, so I have power tomorrow. I have strength to wake up in the morning to go to shul. Whatever you do, the purpose is to do what's right in the eyes of Hashem. This is called Givura. So why do you need Givura? Why do you need bravery for that? Yetzerara, we always have to fight and overcome the evil inclination every time in everything we do. Yes, Tzedakah, no Tzedakah. If we give the Tzedakah, maybe I give just, uh, let me give him maybe a dollar, no, that would be two dollars, no, maybe 18, 18 dollars. He's always putting you in a spot that if eventually you want to do, so do just little, just as much so you, you, you get off the hook. We don't need Gevura to wake up every morning? Yeah. It's a big Gevura to wake up every morning, to the same vinyas, so every morning. That's why the Shoresh, I said in the beginning, is to overcome. Overcome, exactly. Overcome mm. Thank you. Gavar, we need Gaber, to overcome. If you overcome the evil inclination, you consider Gibor. We can learn from here that the Gevura of the Hashmonaim was a true and real Gevura. It's always for, for the sake of Hashem. I'm not going to do it for the, in order to show off. You know, Matikyahu killed a Jew that was sacrificing a pig on the Bima for a lot of people. It was a police officer, a representative of the Greeks. And he didn't afraid. He said, they call Matikyahu, you do the Shechita. With the kosher Shechita, he says, okay, he killed the Jews and he killed the other guy. The same night, chick, chick. Hmm. It was not a fair uh, from the outcome. When they pursue after him, he was kill him. No, I did it for the sake of Hashem. It was a hundred percent for the, Hashem, the sake of Hashem, not to show off, not in order to uh, become, I don't know, gain any profit out of it or become a leader because of this action. For the sake of Hashem, Hashem says, if you do anything that is for the sake of Hashem, is, is, I mean, 100% action is for the sake of Hashem, I'm with you, I will protect you. Avraham Avinu, Nimrod, threw him to the furnace, to the Kivshan, how he survived, it's against nature. Put fire on you, you're born. No? It was 100%, 99.9, sure, with his belief in God. God saved him because he was Gibor. He was that this is a real Gibor. We're saying we have six minutes, right? Four minutes. Eight, Four minutes. Four. Four. Wow, wow, wow. Let me let me skip. Okay. What's the difference between what's the difference between? It's not to be somewhere Thank you for uh, coming and participating. God bless you. There is something called Gvurat Hashem, mighty power, and mighty deeds that comes from God. There's mighty deeds that comes from human beings. What's the difference between the two? 
there is a, a big, big difference. And the quality and the essence of the, such givura. The power of givura and mighty deeds of Hashem doesn't lack. It gets stronger and stronger. Never get tired. Human beings need always incentives. Need always uh, to be encouraged. For example, when I blow shofar, I go like that. A little after 37. <laughs> what happened? I got tired. I had to take air. With Hashem, you know Hashem blow the shofar. When was it? When we received the Torah. He says, on the Mount of Sinai, V'kol ha-shofar holech v'chazek ma'ot, gets stronger and stronger. What do you mean? It doesn't go, stronger and stronger, never get tired. It's Gevura from Hashem. Let me just conclude with saying, I have to skip to the very end, that What's the Rabbi Cook? Rabbi Cook says, who says that Givura is not only or limited to spirituality. I wake up tomorrow morning and I want to go to Davin. It's not enough. You need to strengthen your body. What does that mean? He says, go do exercise, go to the gym. It's very important that you have a healthy. Soul in a healthy body. If the body is healthy, the soul will be healthy as well. It has to be the combination of the two. Eat healthy food. Exercise. Not only Rabbi Cook said that. Rambam said that. Mm -hmm. Before he even start to talk about Torah and Mitzvot. He says you need to be healthy. You need to do exercise. He give you recipes from here to the moon. A long list. Take a shower, cold water, hot water. Do this, do that. When the body is healthy, the spirit will be healthy. They influence each other. They work together. You can serve Hashem accordingly. It says, Who is Gibo? A man's spirit will sustain him in sicknesses. But a crushed spirit who can bear. This is a quote from Mishle, Proverbs. When you have a strong spirit and you're able to overcome evil inclination, you consider greater and stronger than a great general that conquer a, a whole city. You know, many people fell into... The, the Malbim says... If someone is down, has a depression, eventually his body will suffer. Start with getting out of bed, eating good food, do some exercise, lift up the spirit a little bit by doing these actions. And the main thing is, you know that anxiety, it says that anxiety in, 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 lives in the psychological space where the consciousness of God is absence. Okay. Okay. The everything. first thing when people come to me, I'm not as expert as uh, Ariella, but people come to me for some advice on the Torah. Uh, we start first class, we do the steps, six steps by the Rambam. First one is knowing there is God above you, making connection with Hashem. When you start to fill your neshama with Hashem, that's a great start. You have something to lean on. Someone to lean on. So who is hero? There's much more to say. Um, 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 um. But anyways, who is considered Gevua? Who is hero? What's the uh, great lesson from Hanukkah? We light in candles. Candles represent, the light of a candle represent Neshama. But Matityahu and the Hashmonaim didn't defeat the Greeks with spirituality only. They had to do something. actually fight. But they had the combination of emuna, great belief in God, and also 
with their body they fought and they trained themselves, this combination is unbeatable. And this is what expected from each and every one of us. Only spirituality, no good. Only physical, no good. The combination of the two. Under the umbrella of the Shekhinah. Of Hashem. If we do that, we can succeed in everything we do in our life. To trust Hashem, to know that He's there, to trust Him and to do everything for that sake. That's what consider Gibor. Don't tell me that you're rich and you're smart and wealth you get from me and wisdom you get, everything you get from me. I want to see that you believe in me and you fulfill the mitzvot, even mitzvot that are hard for you. A mitzvot that you don't really understand or even some that, I don't want to say I don't believe, but it's very hard for you to understand why you're doing that. You're doing it regardless of your understanding. This is when you succeed. When spirituality and physicality is together, combined, for the sake of Hashem. And I wish you happy Hanukkah. And God bless you with everything you do. We should all, Bez Hashem, be able to acquire this great attribute of called Gevura. A real Gevura is believing in Hashem and doing for His own sake, not for our own Kavod um, or ego. God bless you with everything you do. Happy Hanukkah. Amen. Thank you. Same to you.